Good day, everyone. Currently, we are enrolled in this course, Language Programs and Policies in Multilingual Societies. And we are tasked to answer some questions related to mother tongue-based multilingual education. So here is the first question. So I am tasked to answer the first question. Here it is. What do you think are the three biggest issues related to mother tongue-based multilingual education? So before answering the question, let me first give you the meaning or the definition of mother tongue-based multilingual education. So MTB MLE programs serve learners of non-dominant language communities who do not understand or speak the language of instruction when they begin their formal education. So, so much about that. Let's start with the first biggest issue related to mother tongue-based multilingual education. First, we have lack or absence of books written in the mother tongue. This is the condition of having no textbooks or dictionaries in the mother tongue that are needed to accommodate the needs of the learners having different mother tongues. Although one of the strategies in implementing MTB MLE is the improvisation of instructional materials written in mother tongue, still teachers need books that are accurate and real, reliable, as stated by Decker et al. 2008, that is, no teacher can teach effectively without appropriate materials that are based on two components, which is established government curriculum goals and pupils' prior knowledge, culture, and value systems. With few books available available for most of the 100 lang 120 languages of the Philippines, materials development appears uh, a daunting task. Also, as cited by Sunday and Shushua 2010, books are one of the most needed materials in the learning process of the peoples. Teaching and learning cannot be effective without the adequate and relevant use of instructional materials. And in the Journal of Language Learning that I have read, it is stated there that one of the respondents emphasized that in order to effectively implement MTB MLE, curriculum should be updated and textbooks are, and teaching materials should be made available in advance. In implementing the MTB, MLE goals are not being attained if there is deficiency of materials needed. Hence, there is a need for the provision of the books and instrumental materials that are helpful to the learning of pupils, which will increase their understanding. Also, the Literacy can only be maintained if there is an adequate supply of reading materials. So this problem can be a hindrance in the success of the implementation of mother tongue-based instruction. Since the teachers are not that literate in all the different languages of their learners, thus the production of mother tongue textbooks and dictionaries is a mess. Second, we have lack of vocabulary. The lack of vocabulary is a perceived problem. This challenges the teachers to think about their diction used inside the classroom. This also challenges the teacher to come up with mechanisms or ways that will fill the gap between teachers and pupils caused by the 
inefficiency to speak in mother tongue language. As stated in the study of Lartec et al. 2014, lock of vocabulary is considered to be the dearth of words to use when delivering a message or information that there's information and there is no wide range of the words or phrases used in discussing the lesson using mother tongue. Therefore, it is considered as one of the problems being encountered by the teacher. Furthermore, inadequacy of the, of the vocabulary is one of the practical limitations in the use of the mother tongue in school listed during the meeting of the UNESCO expert in 1968. This means that the language may not yet have a vocabulary enough and necessary for the essentials of the curriculum. It should also be noted that there is no exact translation from the first to second language or any other language. So the third and the last one is lack of teacher training. Some teachers need more training in the mother tongue based education. Teachers must be equipped and trained in order for them to teach effectively. Trainings are needed for them to realize their strategies and style which is appropriate inside the classroom. Teachers should be given trainings for them to have better hold of their role inside the classroom. It is very important to learn about the teacher's role. In fact, it is stated that the most common rule of the teachers inside the classroom are giving instructions, facilitating, setting up activities, correcting, eliciting, and explaining language. Poland, 2008. From this, it can be seen how teachers should be priority in their trainings to continually develop different strategies in teaching. Despite the av availability of the policies of implementation, there is no close coordination between the school administration and the teachers in the preparation for the new program. This is evident that the teachers need to seek their own efforts to embrace the implementation of the new program. Accordingly, the teachers need more trainings and seminars for the mother tongue based teaching. As listed by the UNESCO experts in 1968, the sort the shortage of the suitably trained teacher, teachers is one of the problem and limitation in using mother tongue in school. And having a limited background or no background at all in using mother tongue as a medium of instruction can hinder in becoming an effective teacher. And that's all with the first question. So the remaining questions will be answered with the rest of my group mates. Thank you. A pleasant day everyone. I am Joyce Sinagal. I am tasked to discuss the scientific and legal basis of mother tongue based multilingual education. Upon my research, I have discovered four legal acts that support the implementation of mother tongue based multilingual education. First, let's tackle the Republic Act number 10157, otherwise known as Kindergarten Education Act. In Section 5 of the RA 10157, or the Medium of Instruction, it states that the state shall hereby adopt the mother tongue based multilingual education method, meaning the mother tongue of a learner shall be the primary medium of instruction in teaching 
and learning processes in the kindergarten level. However, exceptions shall be made to the following cases. First is when the pupils in the kindergarten classroom have different mother tongue among his or her classmates. Second, when the teacher does not speak the mother tongue of the learner. Third is when the resources in line with the use of mother tongue-based multilingual education are not yet available. And lastly, when the teachers are not yet trained how to use the mother tongue-based multilingual education program. In such exceptional cases, the primary medium of instruction shall be determined by the Department of Education aligned with the framework being used in the elementary level, including teacher training and production of local resources and materials under the Ed Order Number 74 Series of 2009. Additionally, in Section 7 of the said Act or the duties, powers, and function, state that the DepEd through the Bureau of Elementary Education or BEE shall exercise the following powers and functions. Develop teaching strategies using the unique features of the mother tongue-based multilingual education, which shall include but not limited to the following. First, the two-track method. It includes storytelling and reading, listening story, and oral communication activities. Second, the interactive strategies. This include role plays or any interactive demonstrations. Third is use of manipulative games. And fourth is experiential small group discussions and total physical response or TPR among others. Learning development material shall consist of the following at the minimum. Listening story, small books, big books, experience story, primary lessons, and lessons exemplar. Now let's go on to another legal act, which is the Republic Act Number no. One Zero Five Three Three, also known as Enhanced Basic Education Act of Two Thousand Thirteen. In Section Two of the RA One Zero Five Three Three, or the Declaration of Policy, states that make education learner oriented and responsive to the needs of diversity of learners through the appropriate languages of teaching and learning. That includes mother tongue as the primary learning resource. Section 4 of the said Act or the Enhanced Basic Education states that for kindergarten, the first three years of elementary education, teaching materials and assessments shall be in regional or native language of the learner. That means that what they used to speak or their first language shall be the medium of communication and instructions. The Department of Education shall adhere the mother tongue language transition from grade 4 to grade 6 so that Filipino and English shall be introduced as languages of instruction till these two languages become the primary language of instruction at the secondary level. Section 5 of the RA 10533 or the curriculum development implies that they, the curriculum shall adhere to the principles and the framework of mother tongue based multilingual education and thus mother tongue based multilingual education curriculum shall be available in instructional materials and in teaching learning processes. Now, let's move forward to the third legal act, which is Department Order Number 31 Series of 2013, or the clarification on the policy guidelines on the implementation of language learning affairs and their time allotment in grades 1 and 2 of the K-12 Basic Education Program. 
In view of the implementation of the K-12 Basic Education Program, the Department of Education through the Bureau of Elementary Education issues the following clarification in the policy guidelines. As stated in the Inclusion Numbers 1 and 2 of DepEd Order Number 31 Series of 2012. First, mother tongue language is used as a medium of instruction for grades 1 and 2 in the subjects of mathematics, araling panipunan, music, art, physical education, and health, or MAPE, and edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, or ESP. Second, mother tongue is taught as a separate learning area in grades 1 and 2. Mother tongue as a subject focuses on the development of reading, writing, and speaking in mother tongue language. Third, Filipino as a learning area is first introduced during the second quarter or grading period. English, on the other hand, is first introduced during the third quarter or grading period. And now, let's tackle the last legal act on the implementation of mother tongue-based multilingual education program, which is the Department Order Number 74, Series of 2009, or Institutionalizing Mother Tongue-Based Multilingual Education. Number 2 of the Department Order states that mother tongue-based multilingual education, or MTBMLE, so be institutionalized as a fundamental educational policy and program in the whole stretch of formal education, including preschool and in the alternative learning system or else. Number 7 of the Department Order Number 74 states that for all learning programs of the alternative learning system, Learners' first language shall be used as the primary medium, and thereupon the Bureau of Alternative Learning System shall determine the suitable second and third languages based on the level of functional literacy and pedagogical requirements of education. This will help them maximize the educational benefits and competencies of the alternative learning system. And that's a wrap of my discussion on the scientific and legal basis of the mother tongue-based multilingual education. What is MTB-MLE? Mother tongue-based multilingual education is the government's banner program for education as a salient part of the implementation of the K-12 basic education. Its significance is underscored by the passing of Republic Act 10523, other known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. The Department of Education, or DepEd, is now pushing for inclusion of the mother tongue-based multilingual education as a feature of Enhanced Basic Education Program. In a statement, the DepEd said that the MTB MLE mandates the use of the language that school children are familiar with or their first language as a medium of instruction to allow them to grasp basic education more easily. The DepEd said learners begin their education in the language they understand best, which is their mother tongue and need to develop a strong foundation in their mother language before effectively learning additional languages. The MTB MLE is implemented in two modules. First is as a learning subject area and second as a medium of instruction. As a subject, mother tongue education focuses on the development of speaking, reading, and writing from grades one to three in the mother tongue as a medium of instruction the mother tongue is used in all learning areas from kindergarten to grade three except in the teaching of filipino and english subjects so how must be the mtb mle be implemented in the classroom for the effective implementation of the mtb mle it is suggested that the two-track method be used 
that is the primer track to focus on the accuracy and the story track to focus on meaning. Learning via the two-track method to gain proficiency in literacy as well as to comprehend academic content and gain curriculum mastery, creative and critical thinking skills for decisive decision-making. Listening. Story track that, so here it is, it focuses on the meaning. Listen in order to understand, think critically, respond creatively. In the primer track, wherein it focuses on the correctness, Recognize and distinguish sounds. Recognize parts of words. Speaking. In the story track, it must speak with understanding to communicate knowledge, ideas, experiences. In the primer track, use correct vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar. In reading. In the story track, read with understanding to apply, analyze, evaluate and to create new knowledge where in the primer track it decodes by recognizing parts of words or sentences writing in the story track write to communicate knowledge ideas experiences and goals in the primer track it focuses on the correctness so from letters properly and neatly spell, spell words accurately Use correct grammar. In viewing, in the story track, view in order to understand, think critically, respond creatively, and in the primer track, it recognize and distinguish print and non-materials and be able to critic the materials objectively. So now, let's go down to its purpose. What is the purpose of MTB MLE program? The purpose of multilingual education program is to develop appropriate cognitive and reasoning skills, enabling children to operate equally in different languages, starting in the mother tongue, which is the first language of the child. Four, what is required of a teacher in a multilingual classroom? These are the following requirements as a teacher in a multilingual classroom. Language skills. First and foremost, multilingual teachers need superior language skills. This not only means being able to speak both classroom languages fluently, but also understanding grammar, syntax, and structure of both languages. Teachers must articulate and explain these concepts to students in a way that they can easily understand. Just because the teacher is a native English speaker does not mean she adequately understands the rules of the language. Organization Being a multilingual teacher requires extensive planning and organization skills. Lesson planning for a multilingual classroom is extremely complex as it requires the teacher to plan what she's going to teach and decide which language she's going to teach in it. She also needs to plan out how to approach the material linguistically in a way the students will understand, especially if she's not teaching the lesson in their native language. Multilingual teachers are also often required to keep in-depth records and evaluation of each student's progress through the school year. Updating, maintaining, and organizing these files are key parts of a teacher's responsibilities, especially if you're a multilingual teacher. Patience. Multilingual teachers should be patient and understanding with the students who have a difficult time with the language or material. They may have to come up with the two or more different ways to teach a particular lesson before it starts to click with the students. Thus, being calm, patient, and persistent are extremely valuable qualities for a multilingual teacher and can increase the chance of student success. Cultural Sensitivity 
Oftentimes, multilingual teachers aren't just teaching in two different languages. They're acting as a liaison between two distinct complex cultures, relating to students of a different culture or teaching students about a culture they may not be familiar with or understand can be a difficult and complicated task. It means teachers should approach both the curriculum and the classroom environment with cultural understanding and sensitivity. Lesson planning. Multilingual teachers must develop a strategy and schedule for each day's lessons, including which language she will use to teach the lesson. And multilingual teachers must also plan activities, projects, games, and group activities that will encourage students to learn the material and interact in their non-native language. Teaching. Teaching students in two or more different languages presents a number of challenges. Giving a lesson in students' non-native language can cause them to become confused, lose interest, or get frustrated. Multilingual teachers must find ways to make their lessons engaging and to ensure that each student is keeping up with the material. This could involve periodic check-ins, translating certain words or sentences, or explaining certain words or concepts more than once. Ultimately, multilingualism comes with enhanced metalinguistic awareness, subjective resonance of various languages, differences in the historical symbolic value, and finally, a development of intercultural communication and social skills extremely valuable to linguistic and cultural diversity. Without the assistance of the teachers, we would not be able to learn new languages. They deserve credit for instilling this knowledge and wisdom in the direction of multilingualism.